I'm Sharon Goldberg. I'm an internal medicine physician. I've practiced medicine for 21 years, and my background is mostly academic, internal medicine, hospital-based, clinical research, and medical education. Um, I am going to skip many of the things I wanted to say because I didn't realize it was only five minutes. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. This is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and the peer-reviewed literature. These effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question. Um, we have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure, neuropsychiatric effects. So 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. 5G is a conversation about unsustainable healthcare expenditures. Why do I say this? We've been sitting on the evidence for EMR and chronic disease for decades. Um, and now we are seeing all these epidemics appearing. So diabetes is the first epidemic. I think most of you know the statistics. They're very scary. One in three American children will become diabetic in their lifetime, and if they're Hispanic females, the number is one in two. Okay. So what does this have to do with wireless radiation? Wireless radiation and other electromagnetic fields, such as magnetic fields and dirty electricity, have been clearly associated with elevated blood sugar and diabetes. That is what the peer-reviewed literature says. It is not opinion. The closer you live to a cell tower, the higher your blood glucose. That is based on hemoglobin A1C measurements. So the idea with small cells of putting the cells closer to people's homes and bedrooms scientifically is very dangerous. And from an economic perspective, it's dangerous. And you may not know this. I was shocked to find this out. But the way you create a, a model of diabetes in rats in the lab is by exposing them to 2.4 gigahertz. And this is not for long-term exposure. Um, so. The other epidemics that clearly link from the science with electromagnetic radiation are related to mental health. And this is, this is straight from PubMed. This isn't my opinion. This is science. Dr. Okay? Dr. Dr. Mm -hmm. For those of us who aren't physicians, what is PubMed? I'm sorry. It's just the, the, it's our National Library of Medicine. This is where you would go. This is just the peer-reviewed literature. We have deterioration of mental health in the United States. And if you look really at the science, what does it show? Like, so, and these epidemics are our suicide epidemic, um, epidemics in violent, so shootings, and the opioid epidemic. And I don't have five minutes is not the time to talk about this. This is in the peer-reviewed literature. I have a file to submit for the record. But these are facts. These aren't, and these are things that have just been glossed over by the wireless industry, and I, I really don't have time to talk about them in five minutes. I wish I did. Um, but we need to examine our epidemics in the context of our EMF exposures. What does that mean? That means that the CDC tracking these epidemics needs to, we need to start measuring how much radiation are people being exposed to. And before we roll out 5G, and this means there are four kinds of electromagnetic fields that we know are harmful to human health. So radio frequency radiation, magnetic fields, dirty electricity, and electric fields, okay? Our exposure, any given person, and all humans are affected by EMFs, our given exposure has nothing to do with the research that, that my colleagues are going to cite with the National Toxicology Program. That is an assessment of the risk of one cell phone in the near field, okay? What is our exposure in a, in a day? It's not one cell phone. It's cell phones, it's multiple wireless networks, it's smart meters, it's cell towers. It's this sandwich and it all adds up. And this is a, this is a serious problem for occupational health public safety, and personal safety. And I feel that it's irresponsible to be even talking about the Internet of Things and rolling out a new untested technology when we're not even measuring what are our current exposures from the current networks.